Do you have any idea what she does? No, does she like, does she look after ducklings or something? Look baby after ducks. ducklings? She raised baby ducks. Oh, you're actually not far from the trees. Let's have a look. Really? I'm Caroline Watson. We farm at Yew Tree Farm in the Lake District and we produce the finest Herdwick mutton. My husband and I are farmers at Yew Tree Farm. We farm 660 acres and we've probably got some of the most beautiful parts of the Lake District, I think. Lamb usually is under a year old and then you've got hogget, which is over a year old to two years old and after two years old it becomes mutton. And we specialise in the Herdwick sheep breed. They're living in a very natural environment. They're living off mixed grass and heather, what they're designed to eat. A lot of meat nowadays is fairly intensively reared indoors on cereals, so it's quite unusual to get something that's practically wild. And we discovered that this produced this most exceptional quality meat. But mutton's a product that's gone out of fashion a little bit. People don't really know how to cook it or get hold of it. Sheep used to be farmed for wool rather than meat, and the meat was almost like a byproduct towards the end of the sheep's life. So mutton was what was always eaten, really, up until the Second World War. And because it was badly reared, it's got this stigma attached to it now, which means people think it's knackered out at the end of its life. Bye. But good mutton that's reared well on grass and it's hung properly, I think it can beat lamb any day. You don't breed from the sheep until they're nearly three years old. And because it's this more wild animal, it only has one lamb. And that all adds up to, you know, a, a, an animal that's not very commercially viable in other areas, but just perfect for this type of environment. And an incredibly unique flavor, which is why Herdwick mutton particularly is such an exceptionally rare and exclusive product when it's done well. Welcome home. So to see our Herdwick mutton on drop down menu is going to make me so proud. And I really can't wait to see what the chefs are going to do with it and taste it. <laughs> Baby really ducks, say, nothing like old sheep. Okay, I was no, kind really. of thinking old sheep, lambs, cute, it right. kind of went but all But Caroline, wrong. congratulations <laughs> on being one of the few <laughs> food producers with more than one outfit. Because usually we see them, we see them on, the, on the films and they come in in, in the, the outfit, same outfit on the studio. So anyway, well Thank done. You. Right, should we try some of this meat? Yes, we yeah. should. Oh, don't, you don't so need to. Don't need to oh, you just wanted to have a, a chop? No, we're going to civil. They were, they were good, good looking sheep. Very long haired. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kill Come sheep, on. yeah. Okay. Oh, you just take that as well. Oh, thanks. Thank you. There we go. Mm. So, would you like to have some? There we go. Delish. Do you use a lot, mum? Do you use a lot, mum? We do. Mm. Um, Raising <laughs> joints. Mm -hmm. Less so uh, in the restaurant at Gidley because um tend to use lamb. Yeah. We do use hogget. Quite yeah, a lot, which delicious. is halfway yeah. between the two. Yeah. But you know, one that faux flavour of the lamb is just fantastic with mutton. It's just delicious. Mm. That's lovely. It's good. Isn't people it? always Very consider good. it to be sort of tougher than lamb, and, and it isn't actually. That that no, piece there is just no. super super soft. But you get well, that, don't you? For three yeah, weeks, I think if uh, it's properly reared, weeks, yeah. grass fed, and hung properly, it's, yeah. you can treat it the same as lamb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Mm. Couldn't agree more. And it's got much more sort of depth flavour. Length Fascinating. is amazing. Right. So. So, inspired by your wonderful mutton, mm -hmm. I came up with three ideas, starting over here using your noisette. I've got uh, uh, pied de mouton, which is uh, French for uh, uh, mushrooms. They call it the feet of mutton. So we're going to do like a devilled noisette here. So taking a little bit of flakes of chilli, a little bit of Dijon mustard, uh, cream stock, mm -hmm. and then a nice toasted uh, piece of bread to go with that with some chopped parsley for it. Then we've got this wonderful shoulder, which is going to long braise it with these wonderful aromatic vegetables, a little bit of wine and water just to keep it all stewing. And we're going to make this lovely pesto uh, with the uh, uh, basil, Dijon mustard and put on the top right at the mm. end. And wow. finally, we have the cutlets of, uh, of your wonderful mutton. Thought nice little ratatouille. Uh, and then we'll do a little couscous using a little bit of cumin, a little bit of coriander, spice, perhaps some mint, uh, and uh, some chopped shallot, a little bit of pepper back through there. And then we just leave that to plump up. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think any of them would do your yeah, lamb or mutton, sorry, justice. What's um, any, any particular dish you fancy? Well, I have to admit, I'm really keen to see the quick cooking ones yeah. because I want to prove that you don't have to slow cook mutton, which would be yeah. lovely. Yeah. So either of those would be great. OK, yeah. well, let's see what the audience thinks. So, audience, let's refresh your memory. Let's have a look at the drop-down menu. So was it, uh, or is it going to be the deviled noisettes? Or next we have the shoulder of mutton? And then there was the mutton cutlets. Audience, vote now. What do you like to cook, Michael? Well, I actually think that uh, you're right. These fast cooking ones are quite mm. exciting. That's the devil noisette. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a bit of fire. Yeah, a bit mm. of spice. I yeah. love the fat on yes. mutton as well. Mm. It's mm. really rich and yeah. developed. And delicious, delicious meat. Can't Good. say it highly well. enough. Right, audience, <laughs> what do you want to see? 
You want to see the devil knows how to swim up? Wow. Okay. okay. You got your wish. All right, let's see this. Go for it. Go for it. Right. Wow. Tell, us, Caroline, tell us a little bit about the mutton. It's had quite a resurgence in recent years, hasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, thanks to the Prince of Wales. It's, it's yeah, getting quite the mutton again. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's sort of set the standards for good quality mutton because mm. it's been done very badly in the past. And I think that's why it's got a bit of a stigma. It's hasn't had a it? very bad reputation for a Absolutely. Of years, it? uh, it's sort of people think it's fatty, they think you have to cook it to death. And, and actually, if it's produced properly, as I say, grass fed, hung properly, really, yeah. there shouldn't be anything to be afraid of at all. But it is, it is a premium product, it's a premium price. It as is, well, isn't it? I mean, people price. associate mutton with being quite cheap. Maybe. No, not if it's done properly. I yeah. think that's the difference. Is if it's just sort of a discarded, you know, old you, yeah. fair enough. You, but you're not going to. It's not going to taste. Because it costs the farmer a lot of money to take well, it, it on. Basically, to that's right. I mean, once upon a time, it would be produced as a byproduct with the wool, but mm. nowadays it's different. So really, yes, it is. Yeah. To get a premium product, it costs a lot to produce. Yeah. And what about these heritage um, breeds? I mean, is, is that particularly that, important to you? Absolutely. I mean, the Herdwick, which is the breed that is sort of known in the Lake District, it's right. the native breed. Um, but, I mean, mutton really is good with any of the hill breeds. Mm -hmm. It just means that it's had a natural, slow-growing lifestyle. It's on, you know, natural grassland, fell. Um, and then, of course, that is reflected in the wonderful flavour of yeah. the meat. So. Well, mm -hmm. Let's see what, uh, what they're doing with it. Michael? Well, OK, so we're going to start off with um, shallots. I'm just going to chop these, and then I'm going to cut these mutton uh, wonderful uh, noisettes into uh, usable pieces. So, because we are fast cooking, we don't want to uh, spend too much time doing that, so I've got a big chopping there's, knife. There's another one. Actually, Quite yeah, me. that's a bit... Yeah, that's fine, I'll, I'll use this one. So look, this has uh, got a lovely coating of fat, so it's great, and we're just going to cut them down in between, just in between, the, using the bit of string just to hold it together. So we'll cut them into nice noisettes. I think three pieces would be enough for a portion. I'm just going to season that with salt and pepper. Get that into the pan cooking straight away. A little bit of oil in the pan. And I'm, I love this sort of one pan cooking style, so yeah, nice love... hot seal. Then I'm going to cheat a little to buy some time. I'm going to put those noisettes in the, in the oven and then back into the pan in a minute. So just a little bit of a drivel of olive oil. So started off with hot oil, but we're going to add a little butter because Butter colours at a lower temperature than uh, oil, so get, it, it colours and gets that lovely bernoisette flavour going as well. And uh, Gizzy's doing this wonderful bread, a little bit of olive oil, we're going to rub that with some garlic to, as a garnish with this devilled And you're, you're going to cook dish. these rare, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't got time to cook it, well done that. <laughs> <laughs> That's wishful thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, so nice, nice and rare. And uh, medium rare, I think, probably the best thing. So nice seal off. I mean, one of the things I like to do when you've got that fat is to sort of spend some time in the pan, sort of rolling it around on the, the fat side, just to render it down a little. Sure. So I, I do a bit, a bit of that as well. This sauce is really simple. Gizzy, if you could just Get do me a little mushrooms. bit of uh, those mushrooms. Mm, like, like, just chop them up uh, a nice size. I've got the uh, mushrooms here. Um, okay, with tell us going to go um, in the a little bit about the, the confusion over um, lamb, hogget, Yeah, mutton. I mean, tell us the ages. Basically, most of the hill breeds don't mature very quickly. So mm -hmm. if lamb is anything up to a year old. I mean, technically, it's to do with when the teeth come up, but right. it's roughly a year old. Yeah. Um, so most of the hill breeds don't tend to grow fast enough to be to eaten within that time scale. So then most of them are sold as hogget, which mm -hmm. is between one and two years old. Um, and then after two years old, it becomes mutton. So we specialise in both hogget and mutton. Right. Yeah. Okay. Jimmy, is this is this a meat that you've come across? Yeah, I love across? lamb. I think it's beautiful. How many how many not, lambs? That's the thing. This is mutton. Mutton. I mean, I love mutton. <laughs> uh, how many muttons do you have? We have um, well, sheep animals of different ages. We have about six or seven hundred. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. So yeah. of all age ranges. Yeah. 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 Do you ever get attached to any of them? I've got one pet sheep called Ollie. Ollie. Oh. And nobody else gets a name, so that we don't get too attached. Yeah, yeah. it's hard though. Yeah. Yeah. My dad had uh, buffalo. We had one right. named Buffy and one named Flo. Right. And one night I was eating dinner and he goes, do you like Buffy? And I was, it about killed me, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's really cruel. It is cruel. <laughs> and why, why is there so much laughter? Well, well we're yeah, just having a bit of fun over here. Um, this is not a comedy Shallots, show. chili <laughs> flakes, <laughs> now putting my wonderful mushrooms. I, I said chopped parsley, I said, but a little bit, <laughs> bit better than that. So right. 
So we've yeah. got mushrooms going on in here. Can I just ask, these mushrooms, OK, I've not tried them before. Paired mouton. Yeah. Yeah, Are delicious. They... Very much like a Giro, I guess. You know, oh, they're, wow. they're very similar. They're lovely. Um, <clears throat> They kind of, when they grow quite small, they do look like the feet of lamb or mutton, as they say. So just a little bit of uh, chili flake in there, just to give it a little bit of heat, that get devilled. Just sweat that down, just a little bit of lemon juice for acidity. Then we're going to deglass with a little bit of, uh, of our cognac, just mm. a little bit of uh, flavour. That's quite nice because that controls that real quite lamby flavour. I know it's that muttony flavour you get from the fat. So a little bit of deglassage there with the cognac, just lovely. Burn that off. Oh, wow. Always exciting. <laughs> ah, just love being a chef. Right. <laughs> Never tire right. of that. So all we need now for our sauce, get to sweat that down. And if you just open that, we've got a little bit of uh, lamb stock uh, as well. And what we're going to do is just make a, a little cream reduction mm -hmm. and just get this flavour coming there out go. of there. That's just a little bit of Dijon mustard here and then... Uh, stock in here just gonna bring that to the boil let it cook down and then a touch of cream as well and now i'm just going to whisk that now we've got the old parsley ready to go in now i put the noisettes back in the oven just to finish cooking while i take the pan then to make this lovely sauce so you're going to use uh, the, the mustard to thicken it as well as a little reduction here gizzy so so <clears throat> So let's just recap what in there we've got shallots, um, mushrooms, a bit of chilli. Chilli flake, yeah. And then m mustard and some... A little bit of lamb. We deglass a little bit of the cognac yep. in there just to take away. Yeah. I mean... Can I have a go on that? Yeah. We're starting to feel the flavours coming through now. And then just a little bit of uh, Worcester mm. sauce, just a dab in there, just get a little bit of that... Wow. Spicy, that's coming. And you I, are I'm, spoiled, aren't we, Matt? <laughs> Getting cooked by these lovely Yeah, people. no, it's totally brilliant. <laughs> and then, <laughs> right, last minute, we're going to get your lovely parsley, a little bit of that back through. Now, here's, here's the time to bring back the noisettes and just finish mm. them back through this lovely sauce. Hopefully now, cooked medium rare. And how long were they in for? Well, in all, that, Matt, they've Five taken... So. Yeah, I mean, preferably. But we're going to finish them back in the sauce as well. So that one might take a little bit more longer, but um, just going to let it reduce now. And uh, I'm just going to adjust the seasoning, get it right, parsley ready to go. Right, there we go. Lovely. And then just just a simple sort of, you know, if you don't have the noisettes, you know, obviously it's taken the inspiration from deviled kidney, so mm. you can use kidney uh, as well. But, you know, even if just chop up the, the lamb, the, the, the mutton fillets would be nice as well. Can I just say, do you, so you're saying that to have this with kidneys as well, that would be like my dream It dish. would be. If you've got any, you can saute them in there as well. So <gasps> now it's just, uh, just the seasoning. I think we're almost ready to serve now. So should we just get a plate yeah. Now what do you want me to do with these guys? Just pop them in the, in the bowl? Yeah, just, one, just put them one on there. Bring, bring over the plate. Uh, bring in the, the, the plate would be better. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So, yeah, we don't need that one. So what we're going to do... Do I cut your uh, toast in quarters? I'm just going to take off the string now. Put these noisettes on. There we go. And then just the final one, which I think is the one to try. Remove the string. And then finally, we'll just take this wonderful sauce, which I've got a spoon for. Get here, lovely ladle. And then with all these. Whoa! So what's the name of your dish? So here we are, our deviled noisettes of mutton with a lovely mushroom sauce. Delicious. You guys make it look so easy. It's amazing. Don't well, worry. <laughs> right. Especially yeah, when you're sat nice. there doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. Caroline, here. There's your irons, tuck into that. And don't forget to check out all our recipes on the website, channel4.com forward slash for food, or follow us on Twitter at Drop Down Menu TV. Right, mm. don't be shy, tuck in. We want to know what Jimmy and Caroline think. Here you go, we'll just... Thank you. You don't want to know what I think? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> go on, tuck in. Have you not tried it? No, I have. Mm. Oh, wow. 
Mm. It's fantastic. Mm. Really good. Mm. <laughs> well, after the break, Jimmy's in for a treat as Matt cooks up one of his favourite dishes. Yep, but there's no pleasure without pain as Jimmy also has to take part in the tag team cuisine. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> 